Gloria people, just uh, messing with the uh, sun compass again this morning. Like I said yesterday, I'll um, put this little video clip together and try and explain a little bit more about this antique Bagnold sun compass that's uh, been out of everybody's knowledge probably since the day it got handed over to the Royal Geographic Society. That's my assumption anyway. And that was probably before the Second World War when Bagnold was doing his expeditions in between 1929 and 30 in the Libyan desert. It's mentioned about this device used in the vehicle to uh, just snap objects, get bearings off them as they were on the move. And they were using the, uh, the, the, the well, the well-known of a Bagnold compass, the one that's seen in the long range desert group vehicles and the SES Jeeps of the Second World War during the North African campaign. But this little beauty is uh, hardly being heard of, but um, it definitely is. It was made by E.R. Watson's son, who sadly have gone out of business. But um, again, you can just see by how it's made that it was made by them looking at some of their other instruments as well. And it's... Uh, it's a fascinating piece of equipment that uh, Bagnold invented this particular device and he had them make it for him and it's uh, but anyway I've done that vid before myself and a friend owned this and um, I seen it and I thought it can't go to somebody that doesn't appreciate what it is what it was who used it and uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it really is a bit of navigation history this top bit here is uh, silvered so it's a brass wheel but it's been silvered a chemical process where they rub some on it I forget what they call it now but they rub some on it and it uh, turns the brass to a silver colour and the idea of that was was that even in low cloud the shadow cast would still be readable but obviously not today because it's uh, pretty much even worse cloud but how does it actually work then well people have said when I was asking about this device, asking people if they were aware of it, they said, oh, it's useless, you can't navigate with it. It's, uh, it's only got one dial. Sun Compass needs two dials, so you can do the sun's azimuth on it, and then set it up, and blah, blah, blah. And these people that were saying that were quite, you know, I suppose, eye up in the uh, navigation side of it. Yeah, I'm just a thick. Yorkshireman. Anyway, so what I did yesterday was I played with it, and um, the idea is really is that you aim the blade at the sun in the morning or the afternoon, and as Bagnold or somebody's put on the side here, says so you take the sun's asthma from the Davis tables. So if you've got a book that's got the sun's azimuth data in it then obviously you'd use that but what all the chaps that was on them expedition, early expeditions carried with them was a prismatic compass anyway that they just carried it as a backup so possibly what they did as well was they either had the, the book with the figures in or they just took a compass bearing off the sun and then used that figure so in the morning, 
I've just written stuff down here in the morning. So we take the sun's azimuth. So that's, for example here, 210 degrees. And the bearing that I want to march on is 80 degrees. So the calculation is it's 110 degrees minus 80 equals 30 degrees. So we set the compass to 30 degrees. So on this dial, we would swiggle it around to 30 degrees. And then we would turn it until this shadow on the actual blade, and I'll hopefully post some pictures up with the shadow on, is as narrow as it's going to be. And what that would do then is that would indicate 80 degrees. So as you can see there, I set to 80. And that's what you could march on. So rather than just using it as a spotting device, you could actually navigate with this item as well, regardless of whether it's got two dials on it or one. Like I said, Bagnold wasn't daft. And um, let's say it's just, just a little bit of logic and figuring it out. But in the morning, like I say, it's the azimuth, you take away the bearing. In the afternoon, you've got the, as it says there, it's 360, so it's the azimuth plus the reading take away from 360. And then if it's a negative, you have to add 360. So in this example here, we'll get on it again. So the azimuth is 210 degrees in the afternoon. The bearing that I want to go on is 270 degrees. That's the direction I want to travel. So you add the azimuth and the bearing together, and then you minus that from 360, which gives you a minus of 120. So what Bagnod says is, if it's a minus figure, then you plus by 360. So that brings it then to 240. So on the compass, I set the direction of travel arrow to 240. So we go back round, back round, back round. And it's there, you just, bit clear. I can see it, but. So then again, I would turn it around and then if I got the compass again there I'd show you that would be a bearing of 270 degrees and, and as long as you've got the shadow and you keep it as narrow as possible you're going to be on that bearing just as accurate as you would be with the vehicle mounted uh, compass but like I say, it's important that in the morning you take away the bearing from the azimuth and in the afternoon it's taken away from 360 and again vice versa if you get a, a negative figure you have to add the 360. So when, I, when I first got this and I was looking at it, I was thinking, well, that blade is just always going to throw the shadow bang here. Whereas the, the other sun compasses with the needle that's in the middle, the genome in the middle, that shadow can fall literally like a clock. It can follow the dial around. Whereas this one, the, because of this, what they call a knife edge blade genome, it's always going to fall there. So it had to be something to do with this. And I think you can navigate with this just as accurate as you can navigate with that, as you can navigate with the other vehicle mounted sun compass. But when people were saying it was fake, it was a copy, you can't navigate with it. It kind of, you think to yourself, bugger, have I bought something here that's uh, not legit? But 
by looking at it and figuring it out. You know, some people might have figured it out quicker than me, but so be it. But this device is a proper navigation tool invented by Ralph A. Bagnall. He probably used it for a little bit back in the uh, early 30s before he... What I believe happened was that he, um, he had some other items that he'd borrowed off the RGS at the time. While, he was, while they were doing the travels around the desert, they were surveying stuff as well, marking locations. And they had um, clinometer and teolodite, things like that. And they handed them back. And I think by that point, he'd probably settled on using the vehicle mounted compass more than anything else. So, because this was the only one he's got, he probably thought, well, I'm not going to use that anymore. I'm just going to use the vehicle one. He'll probably put it in the box with all the other items that got sent back to the RGS. So, let me just fold this up. So, this folds, sorry, excuse the camera all going funny again, all folds down like that, and as you can, if I see, when it was handed back to the RGS, somebody decided to engrave it, and they catalogued it as RGS number one, and there it's probably sat in a box, Probably nobody really knew how it worked, what it was, the significance of it. And in the 90s, it's believed that it was put in an auction with a lot of other equipment that somebody in RGS deemed not necessarily worth keeping anymore, not significant enough. And this is how it got into private hands. So then last year, I've seen it and bought it. But it's definitely a navigation tool that is accurate, that will work. And is usable. And it's usable in this latitude as well. So I hope, I'll put these um, figures, hopefully I'll post a po photo with these figures on and you can understand how it works. And uh, that's the Bagnold Andeld Sun Compass, one of one. That's it, beautiful little item. Yeah, it doesn't look much, but you look at the engineering of it, you know, the figuring out how it always folded together and stuff like that. It's brilliant. Really, really brilliant. And to think that Bagnold himself, Clayton, Newbold, maybe even Balstead and people like that, had their hands on this, yeah, the old famous words, gives it go. Gives a go. I'll have a go on it. And uh, I say it's not seen the light of day for many, many years. And it really got me interested in um, some more of the old navigation equipment, all the different methods that they used at the time. So I'm currently looking for a theolodite of that period. I bought myself a, a bubble sextant. They were used in the Second World War by the LRG, DG, sorry, and um, SAS at the time. So it's definitely spurred my interest in navigation. It's just the bloody mass side of it that always gets me. But there you go. Hopefully a little bit more knowledge on that. And it's... Uh, the way it's used. 
thanks for listening and uh, hope you enjoyed the little run through and a little bit of waffling about the device where it is came from and uh, where it's been but thanks for listening